As a man, losing your hair is one of the most shocking and sobering moments of our life. And I think even just hearing somebody else's story about their own hair loss and how they dealt with it, how they cope with it, or even how they overcome it, I think hearing those stories is really helpful. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my own hair loss story from start to finish. Hey, my fellow follicle friends, here's me, this is DJ again from Carrots and Brotherhood. Welcome back to the channel. Carrots and Brotherhood is all about building confidence in your hair loss through transparency, empathy, and positivity. If you find my content helpful, don't forget to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications so you can be updated whenever I upload new content. As you can see right now, um, I do have hair on my head. I am wearing concealer. If you've seen my previous videos, then you know I use Topic Concealer to fill in the density on my head. I did have a hair transplant in 2014, which I'll talk about later in the video. I don't want you to see this video and see hair on my head and wonder why is this guy talking about balding or losing his hair. Um, I used to be bald, like, like completely bald, cue ball bald. And I know a lot of guys start balding at different ages. Some of us start early, you know, 17, 18, or maybe even mm. earlier than that, depending on your genetics or your environmental factors. And others, you know, they start in their 20s and even the lucky ones, if you want to call it that, they don't see any noticeable thinness until like their 30s. In my case, I started balding when I was 21, actually, 21. When I was 19, 20, 21, I had like thick hair, like super thick hair. You can see in this picture here, uh, my head was full of hair, really thick, really dense, really wavy hair. Uh, and looking back on it, I feel kind of regretful because I used to, it used to be so dense and grow so fast that I would actually complain about that. Like, man, my hair grows too fast. Or, Why is it so thick? I wish it wasn't so thick. <laughs> and then it's like, be careful what you wish for, right? And so you could actually see, like, I had I had a good head of hair. And I never even thought about hair loss. My, my father is completely bald, like shiny bald. My grandmother also, my father's mother, is bald. Uh, my grandmother on my mom's side uh, had thinning hair. And my mom also had thinning hair into her when she, when she get, got into her 40s. So I always knew there was a chance, but you know, when you're young, you don't really think that oh, it can't happen to me, you know? I remember one day, I think I was maybe 22, 23, I looked in the mirror and right here, just this, this, just this front part here looked slightly thinner. I didn't notice any hair falling out in the shower. I, I didn't notice any of my hand. Um, I just noticed it was slightly thinner than, it, than their surrounding areas. I wasn't even shocked about it. I was like, oh, no big deal. Maybe the barber kind of messed up or whatever. Fast forward a year, now I'm 23 going on 24, and you can actually see significant thinning. You can see significant thinning right here on the top of my head, not even the hairline, like the middle of my head, not even the crown, the fucking middle of my head started thinning. And I'm like, yo, this must be a fluke. Like, this can't be real. Uh, but sure enough, when I go into the bath, when I went to the bathroom to take a shower and stuff, I would shampoo, and I would begin to see hairs in my hand, like, like full, thick hairs just in my hand, and like, well, you know, what, what, what's going on? Uh, you can actually see in these pictures here. You can see that I was still in the military. I was 24, 25. I was in the military, and the top of my head was just was thinning. You know, it, I, I can't say that I was like self-conscious about it, because it was almost surreal. Almost, almost as if like, oh, this is a temporary thing. It's gonna come back. My hair's gonna come back, and that's how I carried it with me. But you know, three months later, six months later, nothing was getting better, and if anything, it was getting worse. You know, if you compare this picture here to these two pictures, you can see just over a period of a few months how accelerated my hair loss became. Like the middle of my head was beginning to thin at an accelerated rate. My crown was beginning to thin. This is where I really became concerned because I didn't want it to happen. I wasn't ready. Um, and I don't think anybody is ever ready. You, you can never be ready. You can't be like, yeah, okay, I'm good. Let's lose the hair. It's not even a thing where you feel like you could be ready. Walked to one of the docs that I worked with and I just, you know, candidly asked him, what could I do to, to control the hair loss? And he suggested taking Propecia, uh, finasteride, uh, which is the pill that blocks DHT or suppresses DHT conversion. He was like, yeah, this could, you know, you should start taking this now. Like, don't wait, take it now because you've already started thinning. Uh, so take, take it now, but you have to take it for the rest of your life. I'm like, well, I gotta take a, I'm, you know, I'm 25 years old. I'm like, I gotta take a pill for the rest of my life? Like, I don't know if I'm ready for that kind of commitment. I could barely commit to a girl, you know? <laughs> and he was like, well, the, the commitment's not the problem. Uh, it does come with some side effects. And if you know anything about Propecia, Finasteride, if you know anything about those pills or about that medication, then you know about the side effects. If you don't know about the side effects, 
don't worry, I'll be making a video in the next couple couple weeks uh, talking about finasteride because I just started taking it. 35 years old now and I just started taking Propecia, but I have my reasons for putting it off for so long. And I also have my reasons for changing the way I think about it and, and deciding to take it now. Uh, and I'll, I'll make a video about that because I know a lot of you guys have probably considered taking Propecia, but those side effects kind of scare you off. But I, I think hearing what I have to say about it might help you make an educated decision about it. So I told the doctor, no, I don't want to take the medication. And I'm like, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Nope, like, nope. <laughs> like, bro, I kid you not, within less than a year, I went from just thinning on the top of my head, like you saw in this picture of me at the gym, I went from just thinning on the top of my head and my crown, which is pretty bad, look at the picture, it's thinning pretty bad. I went from that to this, like, bald like i had sporadic hairs on my scalp like in right here in the front this part here it, i still have it actually uh, even before the surgery i had just a little patch here like a little tiny patch but everything else was gone dude like it fucking just disappeared and it, it was at the point where i was showering every day and i would see hairs in the bottom of the tub dude almost like i had shaved in the bathtub and there's just hair sitting there and all of them came from my head and i'm I mean, I'm not even say like I'm a super sensitive guy, dude, but I, I literally had tears at one point because it was that traumatic of an experience. I, like I said, all the hair was gone and it, it got to a point where I could actually, if I let my hair grow out, I could get a little patchiness here and a little patchiness in the middle. And I actually found a barber that could blend, he or he attempted to blend my thinning hair on top with the sides. Um, in an effort to just save it and make it look like I had some hair and look like I could still rock the fade. Looking back on it now though, you know, it's like shit, dude, there, there's no hope. There's no hope. And so I got out of the military in 2010. I was 26 years old. I was bald, almost bald completely. And you can see even here my graduation picture from university. I was basically cue ball, man. I was, I was completely bald. I had many, many hats. Like hats became my crutch. I had many hats. I had a collection of hats and beanies and it got to the point where I could not leave the house without my hat. I couldn't leave the house without my hat because I just didn't want to be confronted by people that had known me to see my balding or, or my hairless head. Because I, I and honestly, I honestly felt like they would have seen me differently in a, in, in a weaker light. I, I just didn't want to be bald, man. It's as simple as that. I didn't want it. I wasn't, I didn't ask for it. I, I remember I was angry, dude. I was angry at my dad. I never, I never like said that to him. Like, oh, it's your fault. I never said that. But I remember like seeing my dad in the house and like, you know, he's walking around, he's bald and I'm looking in the mirror and now I'm bald. And I'm like, you know, you did this. And I, I know that's, that's a terrible thing to say, but there was, there were times where I really felt like that. My family members would like tease me. Like they'd call me baldy or, you know, they, They'd rub their hand on my head like I'm fucking Buddha or something. I don't think people realize how sensitive that is, you know? Like, I know that I know their family and I know they don't mean like any harm. But if you're watching this video, you probably can empathize with what I'm saying that I don't think people really quite grasp the gravity of how important or how sensitive the topic is for guys like us. Started using razors, started shaving my head, realized I, realized I couldn't even use a razor to shave my head because I ended up getting razor bumps. Made that mistake just once. Shaved my head with a razor. Didn't even go against the grain, just shaved with a razor. Fucking bumps, dude. Like, I swear, my head looked like the damn Rocky Mountains. It was the most uncomfortable and disappointing result that I've ever had from anything I've done to my head. I couldn't even lay on a pillow. I had so many uh, razor bumps and, and like ingrown hairs for, like it had been at least three weeks or so, never. Did that again never shaved my head again just used clippers at that from that point but the clippers couldn't get as low as the razor so i had this shadow the shadow the horseshoe shaped shadow um which didn't make it any better and even the even to top it off guys i'm gonna be honest with you i don't have a head for fucking i don't have a head to be bald i ain't dwayne johnson um i'm not jason statham i'm gonna put my picture look at the picture guys look at the picture now you tell me honestly that i look good with a shaved head my wife even told my wife who loves me dearly I showed her the pictures before making this video because she had actually, um, she hadn't, she, she knew I was bald, but she hadn't seen like the pictures I'm showing you guys now. So you guys are one, like some of the first people to see these pictures, including my wife. And she was like, yeah, it doesn't really work for you. I mean, you don't look terrible, but it, it doesn't work for you. And that, I'm, that's how I felt like it did not work for me. I look like E.T. 
okay? If ET was named DJ, here I am, okay? When I, when I turned 28 and I finished university, like I showed you the picture of me being bald at university, and I told myself I, I needed a change. I was in a dark place, guys. I was in a really dark place. I was in a relationship with a girl uh, who, in retrospect, probably wasn't the best choice for me uh, and I wasn't the best choice for her, but circumstances put us together. And uh, a lot of my insecurities about my hair started to bleed over into the relationship and uh, I became uh, jealous, I became resentful. Uh, if you know, I saw her talking to guys that had hair, like I, you know, as illogical as it sounds or irrational as it sounds, I would just think that she, if she was having a good conversation laughing that it's because of the hair. Like, she's talking to this guy because he has hair. And I know now, years later, that I was, I was being irrational. But you can't tell an irrational person that they're being irrational in the moment of them being irrational. And we got into fights. I, I started, like, just doing... I don't even want to get into the details, man. I was just... I wasn't a good boyfriend, you know? I was... It all stemmed from the insecurity of my hair. And it got to the point where I fell into this deep depression uh, you know, I wasn't finding enjoyment in normal activities. You know, I used to be really active, you know, playing sports and, you know, I, I play video games because I love video games. I'm not a, like a nerd or anything. I just, I like video games and I couldn't even, I couldn't even find pleasure in all of those things that I used to do. Um, and I think that my own depression and my own dissatisfaction with my life uh, I began to project that onto other people, including my ex-girlfriend, but it also projected it onto my, my sisters. Uh, I projected it onto my, uh, my father. And it got to the point where I realized that I was just having too much stress, and I, I, I self-admitted to the hospital, guys. Um, I was 28, and I self-admitted to, um, to a mental hospital uh, for some psychiatric treatment, because I, I realized that I, I couldn't do it on my own. And it gets to that point for some of us, you know, it gets to that point. I, I guys who leave posts on Reddit just tell, talking about how depressed they are because of circumstances around going bald. And if, you, if you're one of those people that are just telling people to just shave your head, stop it, like just stop it, all right? Because you're not helping the situation. If anything, you're just exacerbating the situation because what you're doing is you're, you're telling these people that their concerns while they may be of little concern to you or you can't quite see why it's important to them, you are, by telling somebody just shave your head, you are invalidating them. And I say them because it's an identity problem. I said that already, it's an identity problem. And you are invalidating them, their identity, by projecting another identity on them. And it becomes almost a dis disassociative uh, complex and it causes depression. It can cause depression, it can cause anxiety. People have committed suicide from problems stemming just from hair loss, guys. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm that far, that I was that far gone, um, but I was depressed and I self-admitted. And I came out, they put me on medicines and stuff and uh, I was on Lexapro, I was taking that and I was on a full zombie mode, man, I was zombie. I didn't like the way the medicine made me feel I did like the fact that I was numb th to everything though. Nothing bothered me anymore, but nothing gave me joy or pleasure. It was just, I existed. And I did that for maybe three months. I took the medicine for three months. You know, I was still trying, I was still trying to look for a job. I was job hunting, couldn't get any fucking good jobs. And I graduated with a liberal arts major. You know, I did eight years of military service, but I, I there was really nothing I could get into that I really wanted to do because I didn't have any joy, man. I didn't have any pleasure. I couldn't, there was no like, oh, this is my dream job. I didn't have anything like that. Uh, and so I, I made a bold move. 20, I turned 29. Uh, it was 2013. I made a, the, probably the boldest, but the best move I've ever made in my life. And that was deciding to apply for an English teaching job in South Korea. And it was a year-long contract. You know, it was, it was a year-long contract and I decided that I wanted to go to Korea because I had learned Korean while I was in the military and I never had a chance to actually use it. But more specifically, the reason why I chose to do that is I needed to, I, I felt like I needed to leave everything behind. Like almost disappear and become a new person. 
uh, that meant my ex-girlfriend, that meant my university friends, that meant the mental hospital that I self-admitted to, um, to a some extent my family. I needed to get away because I needed to re-establish who I am and connect it to who I wanted to be and who I wanted to become, you know, even now today. So that's what I did, dude. I signed up. I got accepted uh, by this company in South Korea. And I came out to South Korea, and that's where I am now. I'm in South Korea. I've been here for six and a half years, guys. Um, it's, a lot has happened in six and a half years. Uh, maybe I'll share some of that in some other videos about my life here in South Korea. But everything that happened to me here in Korea has made me who I am now. I worked for a year, and I saved my money. And I found out that hair transplants in South Korea are supremely less expensive than those in America. So I decided to have the hair surgery, had hair surgery in 2014. Um, I put up a previous a video about that way last year. You can watch that video. But I had hair surgery. I found out about topic hair fibers. My hair surgery gave me the density that I needed to use the hair fibers. I started using Rogaine. I started derma rolling. I started taking biotin uh, supplements with zinc. Um, I started exercising more. I started meeting friends. I, I started, I went to two graduate schools. I went to one graduate school for, for a Korean linguistics program. And then after that graduate school, now I'm doing my MBA. Uh, and I'm almost finished with that. I'll have finished my MBA in September. I've, I've made lifelong friends. I don't get, nobody even asks about the scar. Like nobody asks here. Like, it's, it's just nobody cares. Like, and this is one of the things I noticed about the United States is people, we, we really, we're really, direct when it comes to communication, but some of the directness um, can translate into rudeness and just being too blunt. Like, yo, man, what the fuck is that on the back of your head, dude? Oh, look, what's up, baldy? And so I don't have to experience that in South Korea. I needed this time to really grow. I needed this time to plant myself with the ground, build some roots, build a circle of close friends, build who, you know, who I want to be. Meeting my wife, she gave birth to my daughter, you know, those two things are like the most important things in my life. And even like, looking at my daughter, like it gives me so much joy and helping you guys like these videos not only help me by getting it off my chest and I can put it out there into the Internet, into the world about this type of problem, about hair loss and my depression and my anxiety, but I can share it with you guys. You know, I can um, I, I hope I can I can send to you uh, the message that it's going to be OK. Whether you decide to shave your head, whether you decide to get hair surgery, whether you um, are still trying to figure out which route you want to go. Guys, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. There's a lot of other guys on the message boards on Reddit that they're there for you. The hair loss talk forums. There's a lot of people there that really, there's a lot of support out there. Don't get caught up in the darkness of hair loss because it can bring you there. It doesn't bring everybody there, fortunately, but it does bring some people there and I was one of them. I hope that this video kind of put into context who I am, you know, DJ of Carriage and Brotherhood. I hope it puts into context about why I'm making these videos. I hope it gives you more insight into the type of person that I was and the type of person that I am. Um, because I have a very clear image of the person that I want to become. And by making this video and helping you, if I even just help one of you, then I am becoming the person that I want to become, which is to lift other people up and give them confidence in their hair loss. Transparency, empathy, and positivity, guys. That's what I'm all about. Remember, this is a series video, so I'm gonna be putting out more videos related to my hair loss story. Make sure you tune in for those. I'm DJ from Carrots and Brotherhood. See you guys in the next video.